Hi, my name is Monty Twining, co-founder and product designer here at Roost and Root. The purpose of this video is to use the CAD software that we use for product development as well as CAD manufacturing uh, and go over our slant roof greenhouse, both the standard and the Excel model. Let's dive in. Okay, so the purpose of these videos is to go over the design concept of the slant roof greenhouse, uh, regardless of whether you plan to order our standard or the XL model. The concepts are really the same. The XL model is just an extended version of it that gives uh, quite a bit more inside space. Uh, but a lot of the, uh, really all of the design characteristics between the two greenhouses are the same. Uh, so uh, with that, let's dive into the roof first and let's talk about the roof on this greenhouse. So really in a lot of ways, this entire greenhouse is designed around the roof. Uh, it was a really important part of the whole design consideration. If you do just even a cursory reading about greenhouse design, one of the things you'll notice that's a big problem with greenhouses is snow load. We actually tested snow load by putting a ton of sand on top of the roof. But rather than us designing something that had to be engineered for snow load, which is a pretty complicated thing because snow, depending on how wet it is, uh, is a really big difference in load. Uh, instead of that, we just designed something that would tend to shed the snow. And all but the very stickiest of snow will shed at anything over 25 degrees of a slant. And so we have a pretty radical slant on this greenhouse, and that's kind of how it got its name, the slant roof greenhouse. But the vast majority of that is because of the snow shed. But as it turns out, um, the slant roof has another really interesting advantage for a greenhouse, and that is the transit time for the sunlight that's able to make it into the greenhouse. So greenhouses typically are set up to where they would go east-west, and you get optimal light in this greenhouse for a much longer period of time because of its roof being um, one plane um, and being slanted the way that it is. Uh, so it it actually, this slant roof for a greenhouse makes an enormous amount of sense, both from a snow load capacity for those of you who do live uh, in an area where it snows, or if you're just simply looking at it from a light transmission factor, uh, it, it's just better in terms of the light transmission time that you get on the east to west transit, which of course ends up being more heat during the day if it is cold outside. So it's just kind of a win-win in all ways. But we did end up with some technical problems that we had to be able to overcome. And largely, that is that these panels are really long and we're going to ship them. Um, so the panels have a very unique scissor style um, design that basically breaks these panels into halves. And they come pre-assembled from our shop, hinged, so that they can be more easily put on the roof at your job site. And actually... You don't even have to get up on the roof to be able to build these panels in. I'll show you some pictures of that. So these panels are also made out of a very high impact polycarbonate material that is made here in the United States. And uh, I just can't say enough good things about this sort of slant roof design being used for a greenhouse. Hey, well, so the next thing to talk about is the walls. And I guess it's kind of weird to talk about the walls after the roof, since the roof sits on top of the walls. Um, but the roof is really the big part of a greenhouse in a lot of ways, since it's what's facing the sun and, and you're trying to keep things warm and you're trying to let in pretty good growing light. But the, the wall decisions on this greenhouse are basically made because of the height. So if somebody is standing in the middle of the greenhouse and whether you're using shelves or whether you're using some raised gardens in here and somebody uh, of, let's say, normal height, 5'11", 5'10", 5'8", something like that is going to be working with something here. We wanted you to be able to have full standing height against this back short wall. And so this back short wall is about five foot tall. And we'll talk about these vents in just a second. And after that's five foot tall and after your roof line's got to be, you know, 25 degrees or greater for the snow um, load and while well, snow shedding, um, well, then that kind of determines um, the height of your front wall um, in terms of how high we had to make it. So it's just an angle. So the front wall's pretty high, about nine feet high. 
and uh, the back wall is five. And of course, there's no issue with height on the front wall. You're really your only thing that's giving you some limitations on your height on the front wall are these roof supports that actually both support the roof and the front wall. And they, uh, they are about seven feet off the ground. So there's a lot of height here for shelf space or if you're going to grow something tall. The other thing to mention about these walls is they're made out of a U.S. source. This is made in the United States. Uh, corrugated polycarbonate wall materials. So the polycarbonate is ultra clear, which is great for what's called light transmissivity. And it's specially designed to be UV resistant for purposes of the plastic not degrading, but not filter out the UV light that helps plants grow. So you can't just put any old polycarbon or any, because either, either it has to have the specific UV coating on it. And as a matter of fact, we leave there's one side that's coated and one side that's not coated. And when we deliver this to you, we actually, when we build the panels, we have to be careful to put the, uh, the coating side that faces out in a certain direction. And we leave a film on there so that you can see that. The other thing to mention about these walls is that they're large, they're modular. When you go to put this thing together, you're really getting very, very large wall sections. Uh, and it, it really goes together fast. There's very few wall panels. They're, they're large, they're already assembled. And they're crazy strong. We wind tested them and they didn't fail until like 80 miles per hour. This polycarbonate is already put into them. Um, this polycarbonate is both uh, good for light transmission, like I said, but it's also good. It's got a high insulative value. It's corrugated and the corrugated both makes it stronger as well as creates an air barrier in between to create um, good insulative value. At the bottom of all of these panels and around the whole perimeter of the greenhouse, we put, um, and it's on both the XL and the standard, so it's the same, uh, is a um, black high-density polyethylene piece of uh, material that uh, if you have a lawnmower and a lawnmower shoots out something, it's a little bit tougher than the polycarbonate, so it's kind of down at that level to protect it. And it also gives some, um, you know, kind of a, if you have some sort of gardens or something like that, kind of hides them a little bit and just kind of classies the thing up a little bit. Um, but most of it is just more protection, say from a lawnmower shooting something out and hitting the greenhouse and not poking a hole in your greenhouse. Um, the other thing to mention while we're on these roofs, and we'll go over it in more detail, but we build these really beautiful, this whole thing is Western Red Cedar, um, kind of outside the scope of this video, but I mean, Western Red Cedar is North America's premier rot resistant wood. Um, and we build this beautiful louver in the low back wall here, and uh, we put in large vertical doors in the front wall. And what you get is because of the slant roof, you get an updraft ventilation happening. So the, the air will go in through these back louvered vents. There's a wire screen in here to keep, you know, birds and things like that out of. Um, there is some benefit to letting butterflies and some benefit to letting, you know, something like ladybugs get in. Um, so you might want, you, there, you could put a finer mesh on it, but we do put a wire in here to keep just insects, big insects at, from out of your greenhouse. Um, and then these doors will open up and clip back and, and it creates it like an updraft to move out, um, it, to move out hot air it, so that it doesn't get too hot, but kind of a backwards problem with a greenhouse. It, and, and it's really interesting. I'll go over in a minute when we go with one of the, our optional features, is that you're trying to remove oxygen and introduce carbon dioxide. So your plants in here are sitting around making oxygen and like they suffocate themselves with oxygen. So a real problem with a greenhouse is how do you get enough air circulation to be able to get a carbon dioxide rich environment without too much oxygen buildup and at the same time kind of keep the heat moving and this updraft ventilation where the heat moves along this roof is really a good way to both move the air in the greenhouse and keep some of the colder outside air that's being introduced for ventilation reasons away from some of your plants that would be either in raised gardens or in uh, store racks or in shelving that are along the front or the back walls. So more about ventilation. Um, ventilation is a big deal because of what I said earlier about carbon dioxide and oxygen. Um, but it's also a big deal because these greenhouses can actually get too hot. You really don't want them more than about 90 degrees inside. 
And even in the middle of a winter time, when it's like 40, 30 degrees outside, these things can generate an enormous amount of heat inside and they do require ventilation. Now, this is going to sound crazy, but pot growers, people who grow marijuana, are some of the smartest greenhouse people out there. And they will actually force carbon dioxide into their greenhouses, which is really a pretty good idea. But for you to be able to maintain tanks of carbon dioxide is kind of a, a crazy thought for the average person. So one of the things that we wanted to be able to do with this greenhouse was not to be forced to run an extension cord to it, but we wanted to have kind of up our game in the way of ventilation. And so the way we did that was we created a ventilation system, what we call the AVM system. And basically the AVM system forces air ventilation into this greenhouse. I'm gonna show you it's really what it's comprised of. So the, on this back wall, this is just a computer model. Here, I'll pop up an actual picture of an AVM control panel, but there's a control panel and the control panel has batteries in it. The control panel has a solar charger in it. The control panel has an, what's called an interval timer and it has a humidity and a temperature controller. So it comes preset with some optimum settings for doing three different things. One is uh, evacuating the air in this greenhouse uh, two times an hour. So two times every hour, this greenhouse will run the fan system long enough to completely exchange the air in the greenhouse. And in doing so, bring in plenty of carbon dioxide and getting rid of the oxygen. Um, that is what the experts say you want to do for a greenhouse is exchange the air a couple of times an hour, 100% exchange the air. The next thing it will do is it's going to monitor the temperature. And if the temperature gives above a certain spot, it's just going to start circulating the air nonstop until that temperature drops below a certain spot, just attempting to try to control the air temperature. It's not an air conditioner, but when you do move the air, it will cool down the greenhouse inside some. The other thing that it does is for whatever reason, if the humidity gets too high, it'll also start moving the air. So these three environmental factors, time, uh, air temperature, and air humidity will set off a, a set of fans. Um, we have some specially made IP68, humidity, waterproof controlled fans. They're, they're very quiet. Some of the first fans we tested were too loud. It's kind of counterintuitive to have a greenhouse that makes a lot of noise. And if you get the standard greenhouse, it's a, a, a one solar panel with a bank of four fans. If you get an XL greenhouse, it is a set of eight fans and two solar panels. And that's all set up um, through these beautiful louvered vents and it all is automated and it kind of maintains itself, maintains the batteries, keeps them charged, um, goes into hibernation if it's winter time in terms of there not being enough sunlight. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty basic system, but what it does is it just forces the air back through these um, back vents and gets you more control of ventilation. So there's another couple options that we have for this greenhouse that are really important to talk about. And believe it or not, one of the biggest one is a shade cloth. I don't have the computer model here. I'll just pop up a couple of actual photographs or videos of some of the shade cloth while I talk about it real fast. But um, this thing gets pretty hot. And if, if you live somewhere even moderately warm, you're going to need shade cloth to extend your season that you can use this greenhouse. Uh, it's just impossible to exaggerate how much heat this thing will produce when the sun's out. Of course, when the sun's not out, it's going to be relegated to, you know, air temperature. But when the sun is out and shining through this roof, it magnifies the heat tremendously in here. And shade cloth is usually necessary after it gets even to be maybe even 60 degrees outside, 70 degrees outside, and it's a direct sunlight. Um, one of the other options to talk about is our... Um, I call them boardwalks, but basically if you're standing in here and you're watering in the greenhouse, it's a series of wooden cedar, wooden planks, boardwalks that you can put down the center of the greenhouse so that you can um, stay dry, keep your feet clean while you tend to your plants, whether they're in shelving or whether they're in raised garden beds on either side of the center of the greenhouse. Two of them come in uh, the kit when a standard greenhouse, four of them come in the XL greenhouse. We also offer a 
custom made kind of this one of these screen doors that has magnetic closures on it that you can put in the doorway where you can just sort of walk through and then the, the, the screen door will snap back closed. That's a really popular thing and, it, and it's a pretty fine screen. So if you decide to button up some of these other vents and to keep out even some of the smaller insects, you can. Um, and the greenhouse comes standard and I, this is impossible to overstate. Um, it, you got to tie these things down, especially this greenhouse. It's got a pretty tall front wall and it presents itself into a wind pretty strongly. So we deliver the greenhouse standard with a set of tie down rings. These tie down rings are extra heavy duty. Uh, they're rated for like 1200 pounds a piece. We put an appropriate number of them in, whether you order the standard or the XL greenhouse. And then we've got a pretty detailed set of instructions, depending on kind of the soil where you live and how you might anchor it to get you with this thing anchored down correctly. You got to anchor it down probably even during construction in case you have some strong winds while you're putting it together. Um, and um, of course, once it's built, you want to anchor it down. Okay, um, I hope that helps you understand some of the thinking that went into these slant roof greenhouses. They, uh, they were certainly no accident. They're a well thought through product. Um, and we, uh, a little further down the page, have a pretty good chart that shows what uh, areas of the country we feel like they're suitable for. Um, and uh, anyway, yeah, we'd love to have you as a customer. We'll take care of you. And thank you for watching.